Let's go down to Rome's. So a couple hours uh, to digest what's going on with the Vikings. And even though they moved to four and four in the season, Kirk Cousins looks to be lost uh, for the season uh, with a torn Achilles. And it's really unfortunate. Kirko had been balling, uh, but season goes on and the Vikings still have to play these games. Uh, Vikings still have a strong team. Vikings still have a chance to make the dance and make some noise. Uh, and now they have to decide what they're going to do at quarterback. And head coach Kevin Connell, uh, he talked about Jaron Hall, who came in and filled in for Kirk Cousins in the fourth quarter, as well as uh, Nick Mullins, who's currently on injured reserve, uh, potentially returning in two weeks as the primary guys. But that's also what he has to say at this point. Now, I, I do have faith in Jaron Hall, the fifth round pick out of BYU. I think the kid has some nice intangibles. I think that he is a chance to step into a very solid situation with good coaching, good O-line, good weapons, uh, and also a uh, soon becoming a ferocious defense uh, with Flores on the other side. And then you got guys like Tom Brady just sitting there chilling. And for all the reasons we said that Jaron Hall could succeed, would it be tempting for uh, Tom Brady, who Kevin O'Connell used to be his backup in 2008 with the Patriots, uh, to potentially be like, hmm, I see the value here. And also, I mean, Tom Brady, if he brought Super Bowl to uh, Minnesota, which is just like a, a completely cursed ju jurisdiction, he he would be the GOAT. He would be the GOAT GOAT. He's already the GOAT, but GOAT GOAT twice. But we'll get some Vikings uh, quarterback options. So number one is Jaron Hall. And it would be beautiful if Jaron Hall steps in and with a full week of practice, looks good against the Falcons, gets some momentum, and then all of a sudden he's this year's version of Brock Purdy, right? So Jaron Hall uh, gets things done, becomes the Vikings quarterback of the future. It's like, oh, what a steal the Vikings got in, the, in a fifth-round pick. And he brings the, the Vikings a dozen drum parties in the next 10 years. That would obviously be number one. Uh, but So we, we broke this down into starting options, veteran backups for depth, as well as some young upside. So starting options. I mean, Brady would make sense. And for me, those would be one, two, like Jaron Hall, Tom Brady, et cetera. And then you get into potentially making some deals. So Kyler Murray seems to be, I don't know. I don't know what Arizona's doing. So Arizona, pretty clear that they're hitting the reset button. Our guy, Monty Asif, worth the Pride University of Minnesota Morris, uh, could do a deal and potentially trade Kyler Murray. Maybe they part ways in the offseason. Who knows? But also, uh, that could potentially gum up the cap situation, especially since the Vikings have 28.5 million dead uh, next year uh, with Kirk with the void years. Uh, that's a bridge to cross if that goes that far. Jimmy Garoppolo, the Raiders. <sighs> The Raiders seem done, finito, whatever, and maybe they like what they, they're they going to see with, with Aiden O'Connell. Who knows? Uh, Jimmy G potentially could be on the market. Probably not. Uh, Tannehill. So Tannehill's been injured, and Will Levis uh, came out and just slang four touchdowns against the Falcons. Uh, so he could potentially be the quarterback of the future in Tennessee, uh, which would make Tannehill, who's he, Tannehill's like a poor man's Kirk Cousins, uh, essentially, uh, potentially available in that spot. Tyler Huntley. So Snoop Huntley, who you remember, was a freaking pro bowler, by the way. Mm. Uh, so the Ravens' primary backup. Now, with Lamar, even though he's toned down the running a bit, there's always concern about injury, right? And Tyler Huntley, I mean, you, you the Vikings are a clear-cut uh, reason why, hey, teams aren't just going to give away their backup quarterbacks for free. That's exactly it. But Huntley, uh, he he can throw, he can move, he can do a lot of things. Nick Mullins also on the roster. I, I see him more as a sort of veteran stopgap. Like I think that he's an improvement over Sean Mannion. But mm. Matt Ryan, uh, former NFL MVP 2016, uh, the guy who won three quarters of a Super Bowl, uh, formerly of the Falcons, spent last year with the Colts. He, yeah, he was the quarterback uh, of the the Vikings comeback win. Mm, no big deal. Uh, he's currently at CBS. He also called the Vikings first game against the Bucks. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, then you got Jameis. I mean, the Vikings honestly have the opportunity to do the funniest thing and get Jameis uh, out of New Orleans. The Vikings then play the Saints uh, in short order, and J Jameis is going down and taking it to the Saints. Yeah. Uh, but all right, so those are the options, uh, p uh, players that potentially could come in and start. Now, the the problem is all these guys would have to come in. They'd have to take a couple weeks to get up to speed, to get acclimated. Uh, they don't know their teammates. They don't know the old line. They don't know the protections. They don't know the plays. They don't know Kevin O'Connell. They don't know uh, anyone uh, other than that. It's really good. So again, the the easiest w route would be Jaron Hall is actually good, which would be which would be good. Uh, again, it, it's not against the CBA for Jaron Hall to be good. It's not illegal for Jaron Hall to be good. 
very possible. Uh, next here is veteran backup. So guys that you could potentially bring in, uh, not necessarily necessarily to supplant Jaron Hall, but if he doesn't work out, would be a better option than uh, Nick Mullins potentially. Mariota, the Eagles, we're just collecting all the quarterbacks from the documentary, and next year we'll get Mahomes. Jabroni Brisket. Uh, so that's a name that's popular at the trade deadline. Uh, since uh, it's Sling and Sam Howell's team uh, with the commies. Uh, but again, there is value with QB twos. Uh, Brit, uh, Teddy uh, with the Lions. Now, this one makes sense, but the Lions also only have two quarterbacks on the roster. Plus, the Lions aren't going to want to help out the Vikings in any way, shape, or form unless uh, the trade uh, uh, the trade value is huge, which I don't see the Vikings doing at, at this point. Uh, Case Keenum with the Texans. Now, they do have Davis Mills as well, backing up C.J. Stroud. And maybe Houston does like the idea of having a veteran like Keenum uh, in the quarterback room just to you know, bounce ideas off of with Stroud. Uh, but Keenum, of course, we know Case. Come on, 2017 running back. Sure. Josh Johnson also on the Ravens. Uh, he's QB three behind uh, Lamar and uh, Snoop Huntley. And now Josh Johnson has been around the league with 17,000 different teams, but also he had some crossover in Washington uh, with Kevin O'Connell. Carson Wentz, no. That's all. Where it's kind of telling. Uh, so there's a lot of NDSU Bison fans who are also Vikings fans, and they don't even want Carson Wentz's ass on this team. I don't know, man. Uh, then a bunch of free agents: Nick Foles and Joe Flacco. Kind of put them in the same boat. Hey, they won the Super Bowl. Uh, Cam Newton. Mm. Colt McCoy, who the Vikings actually had to try out with a couple weeks ago. Mm. Uh, then RG3. Uh, circle of life. So Kirk Cousins took RG3's job in Washington, and now Kirk goes down. Uh, could RG3 step in? And it moves us home. He still does have uh, NFL aspirations, although I think that he's very good uh, calling college football games. He's hilarious too, man. Uh, I love me some RG3 on TV. Uh, then lastly, young upside guys. Now, these would be dudes not necessarily brought in to supplant uh, supplant Jaron Hall, but could potentially be a, an option. So Trey Lance, of course, with uh, the Cowboys traded him, uh, traded uh, the Niners uh, for him. Uh, would they pl uh, flip him again? Who knows? Uh, they still have Cooper Rush as Dak's primary backup. Uh, Will Greer barely zap uh, with the Patriots right now. Uh, so Bailey Zapp actually filled in nicely for Mac Jones uh, last year and then uh, won a couple of games prior to Western Kentucky. Will Greer was seen as the cat's ass. He actually did well in preseason, and then the Patriots picked him up. Uh, Mike White, uh, also you could put Skylar Thompson in there with the Dolphins backing up Tua. Uh, White actually had uh, a couple of decent starts with the Jets uh, in place of Zach Wilson a couple of years ago. Uh, Nathan Rourke, CFL superstar. Hey, hey I mean, Minnesota's basically Canada. Why the hell not? Currently on the Jaguars practice squad. I uh, think got Drew Locke uh, backing him, Geno Smith. But but again, I, I don't think that teams will part ways with their backup quarterback uh, just by seeing what's going on with the Vikings right now. But there are options right there. And, and like I said, option number one is Jaron Hall starting and being good, which I think the Vikings, they have – Everything's set up. They have a good offensive line. They have the best tackle duo in the league. Hopefully they can start running the ball. I think Jaron Hall's mobility will actually help out in running the ball, but we'll get into that later in the week. Uh, uh, weapons galore. I mean, Addison Hawkinson, uh, KJ's stepping up. Uh, JJ comes back in a week or two. Uh, defensively, they can get after it. And Kevin O'Connell didn't call a great game with Jaron Hall, but also he may have been just a little shell-shocked what happened with Kirko. So having a full-on game plan that caters to Jaron Hall's strengths and weaknesses, yes, that, that does make sense. So that's option one, uh, but there's other options out there. I mean, Tom Brady one time. <laughs> Why not? Uh, but that's it. Uh, quarterback options for the Vikings in the wake of Kirko's reported Achilles injury. Mm. Uh, let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Once both the work, put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.